this is you, this big box in the middle of the table. And, oh, okay. <clears throat> and I don't think I quite had this HUD, this more elaborate HUD the last time we, we did a leak finder, or we did a coaching session, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so I'll explain this for everybody. Um, we'll start with preflop stats and then move through to postflop stats. Um, this purple row, this first row, is raise first in by position. So we've got, you know, early position raise first in 10, middle is 12, 21, 36, 27. So those are really tight numbers. That's the first observation, right? Right. Um, while it's true that you can play, you know, you want to play somewhat opposite of the rest of the table. If the rest of the table is tight, you play looser. If the rest of the table is loose, you play tighter. And the rest of the table is certainly loose, but you like this looks like you're playing like a rock. Um, <laughs> you're it's over. Awesome. Yeah, your VPIP preflop raise is 1912. Um, does that ring a bell? I mean, is that was that your impression too, that you're a 1912 yeah, type? Yeah, absolutely. Play? I, I feel that I play tight. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just feel like uh, these tables, mm -hmm. like there's no need to really get out of line. And I, I, I try to stick to like a, a, a tighter range mm -hmm. um, because the players are, uh, you know, I ba my basic strategy is just try to make a hand and, and, and make money off of the weaker players. Uh, I mean, that's just what these tables kind of dictate for me. Okay. And coming up playing 10 NL and 25 NL, I mean, that's definitely the strat at those tables. So I think I'm still trying to adjust, uh, I think, a little bit to these tables. But, um, yeah, I feel uh, that, you know, when I start getting out of line or starting playing too loose, mm -hmm. I get into a lot of, like, tough situations. And these players... Uh, you know, they're very call -y. They don't give up, um, you know, to, you know, it, it, even if you're trying to barrel them or steal their blinds, they defend, like, everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just really tough to play, um, you know, when, I, when I'm not, you know, playing my tight, normal game. Okay. You know what I mean? I do. Um, so there's a difference between uh, not getting out of line and playing like a rock. Um, the, and and the, the difference is that um, there are some hands that you could definitely be playing for a profit. That, in other words, there, it's more profitable to play them than to fold them. So you would increase your win rate by playing those hands than folding them. Um, that's, I would just say that's a fact. I'm not saying mm -hmm. you have to get out of line and go crazy, but um, I'll give you a quick example. Um, if we look at under the gun, you're currently 10%. And in fact, let's take this a step further. Let's talk about preflop ranges for a bit. And by the way, guys, um, we'll probably go for, I think, an hour and a half today. Um, after that, I need to go set up for my best friend's wedding, who's getting married tomorrow. So let's look at preflop ranges. And let's run this filter. Raise unopened early. <clears throat> Interesting. So we see, when I look at your unopened raise, I actually see a variety of hands. But of course, this must mean you're only playing some of them some of the time. Because if you were truly playing, raising all of these hands under the gun, then you would have a much wider raise first in. Let's look at this from one more perspective. I'm just surprised to see so many hands. Um, so a hand like ace uh, five suited or a hand like pocket twos or a hand like king jack or say king queen offsuit. Um, <clears throat> consider those three hands, ace two suited, king queen offsuit and pocket twos. Do you play all of those all the time or some of those never or what? Pocket, uh, I, I normally raise uh, pocket pairs Okay. Um, under the gun, no matter what they are. Okay. Um, 
I feel like there's a lot of money in, uh, in seeing flops with those types of hands, and generally, um, the players don't really 3-bet too often. Okay. So, um, you know, that's why I like playing pocket pairs from any position when, okay. uh, when I'm opening. Um, what was the other hand, king-queen suited? I would say I open that hand sometimes mm -hmm. under the gun, yep. uh, depending on the table. And what was the other one? Ace deuce suited? Yep. Uh, probably not too often, I would say. Okay. Um, it's interesting because you do it some of the time. Like when I look at this chart, um, you know, it's on here as far as hands you have opened. Yeah. Um, but if I compare. Let's see, like the frequency of these other suited aces, the, the stronger ones. Um, I'm seeing like over this sample of 30,000 hands, you know, you've opened ace king suited nine times, ace queen suited nine times, ace jack suited five times, ace ten suited three times. And then, yeah, all these lower ones, it's like two times, two times, four times. So it's obvious that you're opening these less frequently. Um, definitely ace, I'd say all of your suited Broadway hands. Um, right. And I'd say king queen offsuit and ace jack offsuit all the time. Um, I, I would always open those under the gun. You're definitely going to show a profit with those. In fact, I would argue that you're going to show a better profit with hands like ace six suited, ace five suited, ace jack off, king queen off than pocket twos. Pocket twos is tricky. It does show a profit, but usually not a very, not a very good one. Mm -hmm. So um, now. That's a slight adjustment. Again, I'm not saying go crazy, but where I think you can make a much bigger adjustment is going to be on the button. Okay. If we look at your button opening range, uh, so just to put a number on that, you know, you're opening 10% under the gun. I open 15% 15, 15 maybe, so almost 50% more hands. Um, and I'm not saying you have to go that far, but you know, you can add like two or three percentage points. Um, but on the button, you know, you're opening 36% and you can go up to 45, 50%. So we're really talking like 15 to 15 to 20 percentage points. Okay. So let's, <clears throat> if I come over to the button, you know, it's going to be the same story. I see a lot of, I, a lot of the hands I see here are great. And this looks like kind of the range you should be opening. But again, my guess is that a lot of these are just some of the time and you need to be opening wider more of the time. Um, it's just a fact. If you min raise eight six of hearts and you got a you know a 70 V pip in the even a 50 V pip in the big blind that calls, you're you're obviously a much stronger player than him. You're gonna be able to show a profit with that hand. That doesn't mean you have to like make him fold every time. Um, it doesn't even mean you have to see you have to put a lot of bets in. Uh, you can you can check it back and pot control you can um, bet three streets when you hit, you can do, you, you'll do a lot of things well that he's not going to do well, right? Right. So, so that's how you make profits with these hands. And that all gets a lot easier in position, which is why you can open it up a lot on the button, but you, you do have to be a little careful in early position. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Let's, let's continue. So that's the first observation. Um, another perspective is, um, you're a rock in these games with fish and I find myself with a bunch of rocks in a, um, a game with a bunch of fish and I'm always delighted when I see that because it means that I'm going to get more of those fish's money than all the rocks I'm playing with, right? Because yeah. they're folding a lot more than I am, but I am there involved with those fish a lot more than the, the rocks are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's your opening ranges.